Renegades of Puck to the Trenches. It's time for Renegades of Puck TV. Welcome to the bunker. Welcome to the essence of No Half Steppin'. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. And before we get started on the No Half Steppin' hockey playoff coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. Once you click on the merchandise link, it'll take you immediately to the classic logo t-shirt. You'll also find the Pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special events t-shirts, and then all of our other gimmicks. Over 50 of them in our online store. Socks, throw pillows, wall art, it doesn't make a difference to us. We put a logo on it because we've sold out so that you can buy in. We sure would appreciate each and every one of you for picking up some Renegades of Puck merchandise. Also, you can check us out and it would be a big help on social media. Please give us a subscription on YouTube. Now, well over 130 subscribers and we sure to appreciate each and every one of them. We have plenty of room for many more of you. So please feel free to jump in the trenches with a subscription and turn on those notifications. Once you see the brand new episodes of Renegades of Puck TV on YouTube, go ahead and spread those links around. Do that by using your Facebook page. Also, while you're there, give us a like on Facebook. Also, you can use Twitter if that's not your preferred method of using social media. You can find all the Renegades of Puck on Twitter at Renegades of Puck. So give us a retweet, give us a like, or just spread the links around on your own timeline on your own. You can also find the Renegades of Puck on Instagram Instagram, and anywhere that you can find podcasts. That means over on Spotify, on Google, on Apple, anywhere you can find podcasts, you can now find the Renegades of Puck. We're making a big push in bolstering our audio-only section of the bunker, so please make sure you are subscribing to all those different feeds and supporting those, as we will be counting on you to help us build those streams up. Speaking of streams, our behind-the-scenes live stream takes place on Twitch. That's where you'll see any second takes, mistakes, or F-bombs, and you'll also get the information long before anybody else. We're building a fun community right there. It's highly interactive. I can look down right now and talk to my international correspondent, Milo, who is checking in on this recording of Renegades of Puck TV. He wants to talk about Game 4. I also see some of my other favorite Renegades of Puck. Becca is in here, and we sure do appreciate Becca and all the other Renegades of Puck for being on the Twitch stream watching the live recording right now. The rest of you will be seeing this much later on, so make sure you're following along on Twitch. It's just another way you can consume the essence of No Half Steppin'. Please become a partner of the Renegades Puck. You can do that by going to Venmo. Just search out Renegades of Puck or scan the QR code that's currently on your screen. We appreciate each and every one of you and any donation you can make towards the bunker. We're headed towards the summer of no half stepping a lot faster than we had intended to. So if you can help out with any funds, we have a lot of ambitions and we have a lot of projects in mind. We also need to add an audio processor to the bunker right here to help upgrade our sound. So please, if you can, become a partner of the Renegades of Puck by going to Venmo. Now I know that you're here for the no half step in hockey coverage, especially when it comes to playoff time. So it is time for me to deliver the goods. It is operation number 650 for the Renegades of Puck. That is right. Show number 650. And on this date in hockey history, we start taking a look around the first round of the NHL playoff bracket. And we have a lot of similarities. We only have two series that aren't tied at two apiece after four games. Now, Unfortunately, spoiler alert, one of them is the Nashville Predators as they were swept by the Colorado Avalanche. That series is the only one in the first round to come to its conclusion. We will recap that in just a couple of moments. But first, let's talk about some other playoff action. The Bruins defeated the Carolina Hurricanes in Game 4, 5-2. to two. It was Marshawn with two goals, three assists, five points total, and some epic chirping on Tony D'Angelo. You don't have to like the guy, but you have to respect the performance that he put up against the Carolina Hurricanes, evening that series up at two games apiece. A series that has not gotten enough attention at all. The St. Louis Blues and the Minnesota Wild, 5-2 to two victory for the St. Louis Blues against the Minnesota Wild. Now that series also evened up at two apiece. Cairo and Perron, two goals apiece in that series. And those two teams have really been getting after each other in the series that everybody predicted was going to be the best series of the first round. Tampa Bay and Toronto. Well, now the Lightning strike back with a lopsided victory of their own, defeating the Maple Leafs 7-3, to three, evening that series up at two apiece. Hedman and Hagel, two assists each. Goal scorers spread out across the roster. And in the late night action, the LA Kings defeated the Edmonton Oilers 4 to nothing in LA, evening that series up at two games apiece. Jonathan Quick with 31 saves in that 
game right there to even that series at two games apiece heading back to Edmonton. So every one of those series that I just talked about, they are now a best of three series, and we will see each and every one of those games on the ice tomorrow night. Let me finish recapping the rest of the games, though, in the first round. It was the Pittsburgh Penguins defeating the New York Rangers 7-2. to two. The, the Penguins now hold a 3-1 to one lead. Crosby with a goal and two assists and three points. And the New York Rangers, who were the predicted Cinderella team coming out of the Eastern Conference, have yet to even show up in the playoffs. And Igor Shosturkin is looking absolutely exhausted. He may win the Vezina Trophy running away with it, but it does not look like he's going to be winning the first round playoff series. The Rangers have come back from down 3-1 to one against the Pittsburgh Penguins before in recent history, but that was with the legend Henrik Lundqvist in net. What do the Rangers have? We'll find out at Madison Square Garden coming up in Game 5. Florida with a huge comeback, tying the game two minutes remaining against the Capitals, and they win the game in overtime 3-2, to two, evening that series up at two apiece. Highly entertaining hockey being played right there, and Calgary defeated Dallas 4-1 to one in Dallas to even that series up at two apiece. They scored three goals in the third period to put the Stars away, so now we have another series that is a best of three. That one's heading back to Calgary, and of course, I mentioned the National Predators fall to Colorado 5-3. to three. Colorado advances. They will await their winner. That series could start fairly quickly coming up on the schedule for the NHL playoffs for the first round. All of these are game fives. Boston is at Carolina on Tuesday, Tampa Bay at Toronto, St. Louis at Minnesota, LA at Edmonton. None of them are elimination scenarios. Wednesday, Washington will be at Florida. Pittsburgh will be at New York Rangers. That's the next series that com- could come to its conclusion. And Dallas will be at Calgary. That's a look around the NHL first round playoff bracket. Nashville Predators, the first team to fall, effectively the 16 seed, going up against the number one seed in the Western Conference. They have now been swept and have been eliminated from the NHL playoffs. The New York Rangers could be the next team out. The rest of the series, incredibly difficult to predict and going to be a lot of fun to cover and track the rest of the first round going forward. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Rebirth Sports, you can find their work online at rebirthsports.com or you can check them out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You see the jersey I'm wearing right here on the bunker as I am hosting Renegades of Puck TV. This is the Renegades of Puck third jersey. You've also seen the home jersey, the road jersey, and all of the other fine threads that I have been wearing as I've been skating, playing hockey over the years. Whether it's in league play for the Mighty Drunks as I'm winning Stanley Kegs or if it is in charity events like the Wish Cup, even the United States Pond Hockey Championships on Lake Nokomis in Minnesota. Everywhere I go, everywhere I skate, people want to know about the threads that I am wearing, and it's so much fun to talk about Rebirth Sports because they make a great product, but they're also great people and they're great partners of the Renegades of Puck. They can help your hockey operation out today because they are not just jersey makers, they are hockey tailors. So check them out today at rebirthsports.com. Now, let's get into the game for a recap between the Colorado Avalanche and the Nashville Predators. John Hines had a big jumble of a shakeup. I think he just picked names out of a hat going into this game. Trent and Johansson and Cousins make up your new look first line. Cunning, Granlund, and Duchesne. Forsberg on the third line. Sissons and Janot, Tolvanen, Glass, and Tomasino are your fourth line. Yossi and Fabrovac, Coleman Carey, Luzon, and Benning. Connor Ingram gets the start in net. Now, we all see these combinations, but let me just tell you right now, they are not going to remain this way for very long because, as you can expect from following along and following the line combinations all season long, it is going to be very ineffective in this game, and the lines are going to have to be reshuffled fairly quickly. We're 2.45 into the first period, and Connor Ingram comes with a toe save on O'Connor through traffic, but it turns out that never actually happened because when we finally get a whistle, we go back and we check a replay, and it turns out, roll the clock back to 156. Burakovsky scores his first goal of the playoffs. It was a shot that went through the net at the seam right there at the back top post crossbar you understand you know exactly what i'm talking about it goes through the seam and it finds its way out initially nobody thought it was a goal except for burakovsky who celebrated audibly and put his hands up but nobody else did so they carried on it was reviewed and easily you can see that the puck went through the net 
I understand that the home crowd was chanting, ref, you suck. But if you see the replay, it is obviously a goal. Colorado leads one nothing. Frustrated fan base. I understand it. 548 of the first period. Fowler's off the box. Two minutes for cross-checking. Ingram comes up with a huge save on Kadri. Ingram then comes up with a save on McKinnon's one-timer from over there on the left circle. At 815 in the first. Byram's off the box. Two minutes for hooking. The Preds would go on to generate zero shots on goal. And what I notated was a confusing mess for two full minutes out there on the ice. Not exactly the time of year when you should have a power play described as a confusing mess. 17-29 of the first Ingram comes with a save on Taves plus the rebound jam on the secondary scoring opportunity. At 18-59, the Preds offense had barely done anything in this entire period. Suddenly, Trennan's second goal of the playoffs ties the game up at one apiece. It was a snapshot from the faceoff dot on the left side after a perfect setup by Colton Sissons. The Colorado Avalanche outshoot the Preds in the first period. 13 to 6 and carry much of the play, but we have a tie game going into the second period. On the clean sheet, we go back and forth and up and down a couple of minutes here, but then at 435, we see Ingram coming up with a save on Landis Gog at close range. A big scoring opportunity here, stopped by Connor Ingram. At 956, Ingram comes up with a save on McKinnon off of the rush, and at the midway point of the second period, Nashville has only managed to generate one shot on goal. So for the game, after 30 minutes of play, they only have seven shots on goal at 1141. Of the second period, Ingram comes with a save on McCarr, who was driving the net hard with speed, and this would just be the beginning of the Cal McCarr show in this game. 12-14 of the second. Francis comes up with a save on Tolvanen's one-timer. 13-33, McCarr's third goal of the playoffs gives Colorado a 2-1 lead. It was a wrist shot from out high. A perfect seeing eye shot just under the bar with a little bit of traffic to assist on the way in. 15-28 of the second. Ingram comes up with a save on McCarr's breakaway. 16-33, Francis stops a save on Forsberg. 16-14. 49. Trennan's on the score sheet yet again. Second goal of the game. His third goal of the playoffs. Bar down, wrist shot, and another perfect Sissons feed. And this one was actually off of a Colton Sissons rebound. Trennan puts the puck back into the net, tying the game up at two apiece. Right around 18 and something, because I was writing very quickly. Ingram comes up with a save on Nachuskin right there on the doorstop. Another huge scoring opportunity for the Colorado Avalanche. We hit the end of the second period. We've got a tie game now at two apiece. Colorado is out shooting the Preds 24 to 18. Win a period, keep your season alive. What will the National? Nashville Predators do with a clean sheet in the final 20 on home ice. 358 of the third period. Philip Forsberg's first goal of the playoffs is a tap-in off of Matt Duchesne's pass across the crease. Perfect setup right here by for the Nashville Predators. The Preds now have a 3-2 lead on home ice. But at 855 in the third period, Taves scores his third goal of the playoffs. Duchesne is out of the play after being high-sticked. Taves comes in trailing the play and walks in with plenty of room as the other four Nashville Predators were down below the face-off dots. And he is easily able to get a scoring opportunity, pick his spot, and score. This game now tied at three apiece. At 9.09 of the third period, McCarr is off the box. Two minutes for tripping on Granlund. Another confusing, sloppy mess of a power play that expires after two minutes. 12.02 of the third period. Nachuskin's second goal of the playoffs is a one-timer off of a feed from McCarr. A absolutely perfect set up and now we have a 4-3 to three lead in favor of the Colorado Avalanche at 18-55 in the third period. Forsberg's off to the box. Two minutes for interference. We see at 19-04. McKinnon's got an empty net goal. That's his fifth of the series, giving Colorado a 5-3 to three lead and that would be your final. The Nashville Predators did get one last scoring chance but they were unable to convert 38-31 year shots on goal in favor of the Colorado Avalanche and handshakes were held at center ice and for the national purse it's the first time in franchise history that they have ever been swept they have lost in every other combination of games but this is the first time that they have ever been swept and it is absolutely awful to see the numbers that were put up against the National Predators. Everybody knows the Colorado Avalanche this season were 56-19-7. and seven. They had 119 points. They won the Central Division, and they were the number one seed in the Western Conference. The National Predators were the number two wildcard team and finished the season with 97 points. They finished in fifth place in the Central Division, well, well behind the Colorado Avalanche. The Abs are clearly a dominant team. They have pre predicted to be this dominant and to march through the playoffs for a couple of seasons now, but they have not been able to do so. Cal McCarr clearly wanted to win the Norris Trophy in this series alone against the Nashville Predators to prove a point. Whatever the motivation was, it was a dynamic series. And if the Colorado Avalanche do go on to manage their way through three more rounds of the best of seven series, no doubt Cal McCarr will be in the discussion for the Conn Smythe 
after what we saw in this first round, it is very obvious he is a megastar in this league. Roman Yossi should still win the Norris Trophy for the regular season performance that he had this year, but Kel McCarr is clearly staking his name to that award moving forward in the future. Now, for the Colorado Avalanche, all the expectations are on their shoulders. They will sit back and they will wait for their next opponent. For the Colorado Avalanche, I do not think that they were prepared at all for the rest of the playoff tournament by the Nashville Predators. A Preds team that was supposed to be incredibly heavy and brought a lot of sandpaper, frankly, brought none of that to this playoff series. And that's the reason that they're going home in four games. UC Soros being injured and not being able to compete against the Colorado Avalanche is definitely a factor. You would have to be insane to think that a goaltender that is about to be a Vezina finalist is not a factor when he cannot perform in the playoffs. However, look around the NHL, look around the playoff bracket right now. The Pittsburgh Penguins have a 3-1 to one series lead with Louis Domingue in net. Across the board, you are seeing backup goaltenders, third-string goaltenders, emergency goaltenders, all getting the job done for their teams. Connor Ingram played good hockey for this Nashville Predators team. David Riddick not so good in game one. Connor Ingram gave the Preds opportunities to win in other games. They failed to do so. The Preds as a team did not bring any of their identity, did not bring any of their effort. And that's why they find themselves out of the playoffs tonight after just four games. Now that opens up a ton of questions moving forward. You have a head coach that currently does not have a contract. You have a general manager that has yet to determine when exactly he is going to retire, but that could come at any time, you also have a 40-goal scorer that just became a free agent. There are a lot of questions to be answered by this Nashville Predators team moving forward. You could be looking at a complete rebuild if you are starting over with a new GM, a new head coach, minus a 40-goal scorer. We will have to see. That's exactly why we're here in the bunker with the Renegades of Puck. We'll be here all summer, and we'll continue covering each and every one of these stories as they break. For now, let's go back and finish recapping this series on the next episode of Renegades of Puck TV. We will recap the entire season. Connor Ingram was 33 out of 37 in this game, and he ends up taking the loss. Now, listen, Connor Ingram was thrown into a difficult situation, called up from Milwaukee, and put into the starter's crease after game one. He did a very good job. He gave the National Predators opportunities to win two of the three games that he started in this series, and he has a bright future coming up for the Nashville Predators. I anticipate he should be the backup goaltender for this franchise behind UC Soros going into next season. And for David Riddick, while it was enjoyable to have him on the team this season, frankly, his numbers do not meet NHL standards and his performances down the stretch do not warrant him being brought back as a backup goaltender for this Nashville Predators team. Mostradamus covers all of these topics and have had between the pipes as well within his domain. Mostradamus is going to go back and take a look at the series that was talk about David Riddick, talk about Connor Ingram, and of course talk about the Nashville Predators and their goaltending situation moving forward. You can find him on Twitter at CreekGoalie35. You can also watch him right here on Renegades of Puck TV. Thanks, Charlie. And unfortunately, what we had all feared after Game 3 came to reality after Game 4, the Preds getting swept for the first time in franchise history, quite frankly, to a much better opponent. The Colorado Avalanche dominated this series from start to finish. Preds gave us a little bit of a hope spot in the third period with Philip Forsberg's goal, but aside from that, the Preds didn't even lead at any point in the series. It was an absolute whitewashing of the Nashville Predators in this series. Connor Ingham did what he could. He was put in a tough spot, of course. First period of Game 1 after it's 5 to nothing, he comes in there, stops 30 out of 32. Of course, we know Game 2, he was an overnight sensation across the league, 49 out of 51 shots on goals in game two and of course came out on the losing end the Preds could not generate any offense in that one 35 out of 41 probably his worst game was game three back to playing solid in game four maybe he would have liked the McCarr goal from the point in game four maybe he could have stopped that one I didn't see that he was totally screened on I didn't see it was any deflection uh, by Tanner Janot so perhaps that one just beat him, beats him clean but overall miraculous job by him Again, in a tough spot. And we see it across the league. There's other goaltenders and other teams dealing with second, third string goaltenders playing absolutely critical minutes in a playoff stretch. And Connor Ingram has earned a spot going forward on this roster. He will be UC Saros' backup come next season. Now, we mentioned UC Saros, of course, 
would the series have been any different with Saros? Well, the closest the Preds got to winning was game two in overtime. And I don't see how Saros could have done any better than Connor Ingram did. He stopped again, 49 out of 51 shots. What more can you ask the kid to do? So maybe the Preds pull out game four with UC Saros in that. I don't know. But Saros was not the only reason this National Predators team could not compete with the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche dominated basically from start to finish. They outshot the Preds 176 to 112. That's 64 more shots on goal in just four games of hockey. It was just a relentless assault on the national defense. And of course, that's something that whoever the GM is going to be next season, whoever the coach is going to be next season, that's something that they will have to address. Who's going to help UC Saros keep those pucks out of the net? next season as his blue liners. Obviously, you have Roman Yossi, you have Matthias Ekholm. I liked what I saw out of Carrier. I liked what I saw out of Fabro. I didn't like Fabro after last season. He definitely made some improvements, but overall, defensively, this team failed miserably against the Colorado Avalanche. I do want to say, of course, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you guys here on Renegades of Puck TV, and thank you for joining us day in and day out for our broadcasts. It has been an honor for me to do this for you guys. I love doing it. I love seeing all you guys at the home base freakout back in February. That video will be coming out soon. Love you guys. All the respect in the world. Charlie, you are the hardest working man in this business. And sir, we will continue moving forward and getting more and more renegades in the bunker with us. You can find him on Twitter at Greek Goal E35. You can watch him right here on Renegades of Puck TV. He's the starting goaltender of the Renegades of Puck. And I sure do appreciate Mastradamus jumping in the trenches all season long, backstopping the Renegades of Puck. Stick taps, love, and respect to you, my friend. Can't wait to see what we do moving forward in the trenches here together. Let me tell you about Strong Style Fitness, an incredible partner of the show. You can find Strong Style Fitness at strongstylefit.com or Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. 150 workouts by a certified person trainer all completely set up for you renegades of puck on demand and donation base that's right whether it's your first stretch or you throw iron like pro tracy is ready to dedicate her time and services to helping you renegades stay fit for the fight so please check out strong style fit today i've seen the results and i know plenty of other renegades that are experiencing the results right now you can too strong style fitness check them out today not much good that I can talk about from this game four. The Trennan came out, played strong. The herd line came out, played strong. They represented themselves very well. Trennan had two goals in this game. But honestly, other than that, the Nashville Purs were overmatched, overwhelmed, and frankly, didn't show up for large stretches of many of the games in the series. It was a very difficult series to watch. It was a very difficult series to cover. And for the Nashville Purs, who definitely overperformed in the regular season just to get to the playoffs, definitely underperformed when it came to the playoffs. They didn't bring the identity that we had come to expect. They didn't bring the jam. They didn't bring the physical game. They didn't bring the sandpaper. And that's why they didn't bring any victories home either in this year's playoffs. The first time ever the franchise has been swept in the playoffs. Eight consecutive years into the playoffs and the most recent stretches of playoff history is very unkind. Sean C. Smith is in the bunker to talk to me about all things Nashville Purs. Go back, take a look at the series and give me his thoughts on everything that happened between the Nashville Purs and the Colorado Avalanche. You can find his work at onthefourcheck.com. You can find him on Twitter at SCSOTF and you can watch him right now on Renegades of Puck TV. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, it's Sean C. Smith, and it looks like we're going to be talking about the last game of the season because the Predators got swept by the Avalanche, and I, I don't have a lot to say tonight. I mean, realistically, it's disappointing, but, but here's the thing, and I'm going to be very, very straightforward and honest with you. If you spend 82 games in a season building, encouraging, promoting an identity that you are a team that plays an aggressive physical game, and you do that for 82 games, you do it well enough that people say that Nashville is going to come into this series against Colorado and goon it up, that it's going to be a, a brawl, that it's going to be a lot of penalties, and it's going to be a lot of ugly play. Um, and then you show up to the playoffs in the first round against the number one team, and you don't play to that identity. You know, I sat in Bridgestone Arena tonight uh, with, as a fan, and uh, Brian was covering the game for On the Forecheck. And as I sat there, I watched them play hype videos from the regular season. 
and a lot of those hype videos contained devastating hits, just crushing, crushing blows against the boards, uh, fights, uh, you know, going for pucks in the corners, these major big physical aspects of the Predators 82 season game that I think everyone had become fairly familiar with over the course of the season. But it looked strange because it looked like a team from another time. It looked like a team that we used to know. And I think seeing the Predators on the ice the way they were for the previous four playoff games was really shocking because it's almost like they decided to not play to that identity. Almost like, uh, you know, teaching Rocky to fight with his other hand and then switching at an opportune moment. All of a sudden we're in the playoffs, Predators, and we're not going to play to our identity. Really kind of shocking. Um, dare I say that Crazy Charlie would call it half-stepping. And I don't appreciate it. And I didn't like it. I don't think anyone did. I know that a lot of you out there are frustrated, and I understand. Um, and I, I feel like you should be frustrated because you saw your team get swept in the playoffs, and they weren't playing the way you'd gotten used to seeing them play. They'd gone down fighting, and I don't mean if they'd dropped the gloves in every game. What I mean is if they'd gone down playing the style of hockey that got them there, it would be a little bit different. But they went down playing vanilla hockey. They went down playing half-step hockey. And uh, the Renegades of Puck, it's not what we're about. So I'm going to call it out. It was a half-step in playoff performance. Hopefully, something will change. Things will get better. But we've got a whole off-season to talk about it. And that's, I guess, what we have to look forward to, folks. So, Charlie, disappointed. There'll be more analysis later, but I'm going to send it back over to you. You can check out his work at onthefourcheck.com. He's got the intel that you need to know, and I sure am glad that Sean C. Smith jumps in the trenches with the renegades of Puck. Stick taps love and respect to you, my friend. I appreciate all the hard work you've put on for us this entire season. It sure has meant an awful lot, and it has been of tremendous help. Let me tell you about Stripe Digital Solutions, stripedigitalsolutions.com. Very easy, or social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whether it's the logo on the wall or the crest on the jersey that you've seen, the t-shirts that I have designed, renegadesofpuck.com. All of these things are created by assistance from Stripe Digital Solutions. As a matter of fact, starting to work on graphics packages for the summer of No Half Step and starting to work on all kinds of different things moving forward with Stripe Digital Solutions. Your business, your brand, believe me, you need the assistance and Stripe Digital Solutions is the perfect partner when it comes to these situations. Get the conversation going with Brandy today by going over to StripeDigitalSolutions.com. I am so appreciative of having such an incredible partner in the trenches with the renegades of Puck making everything look good and run smooth. Trust me, you need a partner like Stripe Digital Solutions. Let me also talk to you about a couple of numbers very quickly. Philip Forsberg, was this the last time we'll ever see Philip Forsberg in a Nashville Predators uniform? Right now, I am very uncertain whether he will be returning or not. I think a lot depends on what happens with the head coach and potentially with the general manager. But Philip Forsberg did score a goal in this game and for just a brief second, we got to see King Philip score one last time, smile one last time, and the Preds lead one last time. Trenton, two goals in this game, and he was absolutely incredible in this playoff series. Great job by him. On the assist sides of things, Matt Duchesne picks up an assist. Tanner Snow picks up an assist. Colton Sissons, two assists in this game. Again, the herd line was very, very good, very dynamic in this game. The most noticeable players on the ice for the Preds. Ekholm picks up an assist in this game. When it comes to shots on net, the captain, Roman Yossi, had eight shots on goal. Philip Forsberg had four shots on goal. When it comes to block shots, the captain, Roman Yossi, blocked four shots in total. When it comes to hit, Dante Fabro had six hits in this game. Luke Cunning had five hits in this game and time on ice. As you've come to expect, it's almost always Mikhail Grandin that leads the forwards in time on ice this season, 23-42. And if this is John Hines' last game as the National Predators head coach, the one player that may suffer the most is Mikhail Granlund. Under Peter Laviolette, Mikhail Granlund was invisible. Under John Hines, Mikhail Granlund has legitimately been a 1C, 2C dominant player two-way player almost every night that he's been out there. And he put up one hell of a year 
for this National Predators team. And, of course, total time on ice, your captain, Roman Yossi, 27-32 in time on ice in Game 4 as the National Predators are swept by the Colorado Avalanche. Let me just send it over to Brian Baston for one last time to talk Nashville Predators hockey. Brian was on the front lines tonight. He runs the Renegade Analytics Desk. He's got one big snap, but he's got so much more because he was on the front lines at Bridgestone Arena tonight covering Game 4 of the Nashville Predators and the Colorado Avalanche. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston. You can check out his work on the 4 He's got the charts you need to see and the numbers you need to know. Thanks a lot, Charlie. I'm coming to you live from Bridgestone Arena for the final time of the 2021-22 season after the Predators were swept in the first round by the Colorado Avalanche following the Game 4 loss, 5-3. to three. We saw a little bit of life in this team, similar to what we saw in Game 2. Uh, obviously, the herd line was probably the top unit on the ice for the Predators, with Yakov Trenin adding another two goals to his postseason tally. But it was too little too late, unfortunately. And the rest of the team, again, did not seem to show up on offense. And that may have been what plagued the Predators for not just this playoff series, but the entire last month of the regular season as well. And despite the fact that this is the very first time in franchise history that the Nashville Predators have been swept in the playoffs, this does make the fourth straight year that Nashville has been kicked out of the playoffs in the first round, including the year with the play-in round um, during the COVID bubble season. So what is there to do now? Where are we to go from here? Obviously, the fans and I imagine the players are probably not happy with this string of consecutive first round exits. Yes, the team was not picked to go to the playoffs and yes, they did exceed expectations, but expectations and moral victories like that aren't probably comforting to players and I'm sure they're not comforting to the fans. So what is there to do? Where do we go from here? Obviously, this team was outmatched the entire time. And in fact, I talked to Norman Yossi after the game, and he had a pretty clear comment um, you know, as to where this, this team belongs uh, among the NHL's elite. Um, well, I think he saw it in playoffs. I mean, uh... Strong words from the captain, saying quite a bit without saying too much at all, actually. And he's probably, again, mirrors the feelings of the fans. So where do we go from here? Obviously, this isn't sustainable. Coach Hines, obviously he's had his issues and there have been problems and coaching issues that we've seen throughout this, this playoffs in the last month of the season. But where do you go? Is this, some, is this a problem that's indicative of the head coach and it's time for another change? Or is this something that's built into the very foundation of this team, starting at the very top with general manager David Poyle? We're yet to find out. We'll see. We've got a lot of big questions to answer over the offseason. And so we're going to have to take a look. But as, we, as Roman Yossi said, this team was not built to be and could not perform like the best teams in the playoffs in the league. And that's been true for some time now. It'll be interesting to see what those changes are because changes are needed. We'll just see if they're the right ones. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Bass, and he's got the numbers you need to know and the charts you need to see from on the forecheck.com. He runs the Renegade Analytics Desk, and tonight he was on the front lines of Bridgestone Arena covering game four between the Nashville Predators and the Colorado Avalanche. Stick taps, love, and respect to Brian Baston for doing such an incredible job. Brian, I certainly do appreciate you. All the love, my friend. Let me tell you about one more great partner that really came through for us for the playoffs. These late puck drops, these early mornings trying to get up, get to work, get your projects off and running. Well, if it wasn't for Blessed Day Coffee and Banner's Blonde Roast, I don't know if I would have been able to do that over the last 10 days or so. So I really wanted to give a big thanks and shout out to Blessed Day Coffee for sponsoring the show and for joining with us in partnership over the first round of the playoffs for the Nashville Predators. Please check them out, blesseddaycoffee.com. They're still offering 10% off with the code FANGS2022. We sure do appreciate them. Stick taps, love, and respect. I enjoyed getting to have your product on the set here, and I enjoyed getting to have your product in my kitchen. It smells good, and it sure does taste good. And I'm going to love having this mug for a very long time. Thank you, guys. It meant a lot to have you as part of the show, and we look forward to working with you again in the future. Again, blessed day coffee really came through for us here in the playoffs. The ultimate one, well, I know how the ultimate one feels right now. It's got to be tough for the guy. He can't even go smash the car in front of the arena anymore. So for the Nashville Predators, the season has come to its conclusion, and the ultimate one, well, I'm going to give him a chance to talk one more time. Listen, I don't know what to say. We outplayed expectations this year. We weren't supposed to be here. We certainly weren't supposed to keep any of the games close. And look, let's face it, even for just a hot minute, we did lead. Some of the guys really put the team on their backs and they tried. 
Duchesne, Trennan, Ingram. There's only so much you can do, especially when you're faced with a team that, despite the odds, were able to overcome everything we threw at them. <laughs> but, you know, we weren't supposed to be here. We outplayed expectations. And look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've got the knowledge and the, uh, the, the foresight, the powers, if you will, to know what's going to happen next. There's, there's a lot on the table. But we still outplayed expectation. We still did better than just about everybody said we were going to do. We weren't supposed to be here. And we were. Now, what happens in the offseason? Charlie, Brian, Sean, Mosh, Anne, Rachel, they're better equipped. Those renegades are the ones you need to follow. I'm just here to be an idiot and try to get you hyped up. So, my time's over, at least for this season. So, until then, I guess it's uh, go NSC, go Grizz, go Sounds. And, of course, there's always go Titans. Let's make it a good season for everybody else in Tennessee. Show your support for the rest of the teams. Renegades will see you next season. We sure do appreciate the ultimate predator for all the hard work he has done both on camera and behind the scenes for the Renegades of Puck and for ROP TV throughout this year. You have no idea just how much work that guy truly does. And for the ultimate one and ultimate Courtney, we sure do appreciate you guys and all the hard work you've done. Now listen, I'm going to go ahead and close this thing out by saying for those of you who are at the game tonight, at the end after the handshake line, you probably saw Philip Forsberg take one final lap around the rink. For those of you who have been around the game for a very long time, you know exactly what taking one final solo lap means. This is more than likely the last time the Nashville Purs will have Philip Forsberg in their lineup. To think about how that affects the team moving forward is just it's huge. It is absolutely huge. It's something that we're going to have to discuss at great length, and it is something that is definitely going to have to be discussed in a very serious conversation when it comes to the general manager, David Poyle. For now, we're going to table all of it, and we're just going to say, if this was the last time we got to see you skate at Bridgestone Arena as a Nashville Predator, Philip Forsberg, thank you for everything that you've done as a Nashville Predator. Thanks for all the goals. Thanks for all the highlight reel plays. It sure has been a delight and a pleasure covering you as a Nashville Predator. I sure hope it's not the last time. We'd love to have you back here for the rest of your career. It is sure is fun watching you play hockey. For Mastradamus, for Sean C. Smith, for Brian Baston, for The Ultimate One, and for each and every one of you Renegades of Puck. Thank you so much for jumping in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck this season for Nashville Predators hockey coverage. We sure hope that you will continue jumping in the trenches as we continue talking about the Nashville Predators in the offseason and also talking about the rest of the National Hockey League playoff tournament. We will also be talking about the Milwaukee Admirals and their continued quest in the AHL. Plenty of hockey still to talk about. Disappointing as it is that the Nashville Predators will no longer be a part of that landscape moving forward for the summer, we will still be here in the bunker talking all things hockey. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sun. Stick taps, love, and respect.